Hi, everyone. We will continue from the same point we were last week, right? And we are starting from the item 14. Let us summarize our stance in the following proposition. All spirit phenomena have the principle, the existence of the soul. Its survival upon the death of the body and its ability to manifest itself. So by the number one, we already have the main basis of any spiritist phenomena, right? Our soul does not perish when our body, physical body does. Every spiritist phenomena, spirit phenomena, as he's saying here, is based in the existence of the soul, in the continuous existence of our spirit. Since they result from a law of nature, these phenomena, having nothing extraordinary or supernatural about them, at least in the common meaning of, those, of these words. If we remember, he already mentioned that none of the spiritist phenomena are extraordinary, are supernatural. It's exactly the opposite. Everything is natural based on common laws. Many events are regarded as supernatural because they cause is unknown. And having determined the true cause, spiritism has relegated them back to the domain of natural phenomena. We see quite often on TV, kind of TV shows like where people are trying to present some ghost phenomena, some poltergeist phenomena, like something is really out of this world. And using the spiritism as a basis, we are able to identify every single one and to explain, if not all, the majority of the phenomena we could see in those events. Among the incidents called supernatural, spiritism show many of them to be impossible in the first place, and therefore place them among superstitious beliefs. We need to speak about superstitious beliefs because it happens everywhere. It happens on any philosophy, on any religion. And spiritism is not protected against it as, it as well. There are spiritists for many years that they have superstitions because they perhaps misunderstood a few things or they haven't had the opportunity to evaluate better a few phenomena they they could see or they heard about it. But what is a superstition? Superstition, you know, is, is something you cannot really explain, is it? And within the spiritism, it's hard not to explain things, at least about the phenomena things, you know. I, I think so far I found answers for everything that I have questioned before in the spiritism. That's why I like it to start with, because there are answers for everything. Perhaps we have a hard time to find the answers. Sometimes we do not try to find the answers in the right way, because we need to study. We need to understand. We need to compare answers. And quite often, people just jump into the spiritism because they have questions A, B, C, but they want someone to give them the answers. They don't want to be prepared to find the answers themselves. Although spiritism recognizes a base of truth for many popular beliefs, it absolutely does not accept all the fantastic stories created by the imagination. I think we spoke already a couple of times here that to consider something as 
spirit phenomena, we need to eliminate everything else. That's the first thing to do. And Kadak is saying here that imagination can play a massive role in things that we see, in things that we felt, but we haven't bothered to spend time to study or to analyze what's going on. So we have to be careful, especially after we gain some knowledge about spiritism phenomena, spiritism itself, not to consider that everything is related to the spirits, right? I will remind you that through the book because I've seen many spiritists considering everything that happens around them, oh, that was as a spirit, basically because we want to blame the spirits, but we need first to evaluate case by case. To judge spiritism by facts, that it itself does not accept it to show proof of ignorance and complete disregard for the correct opinion. What can we say about that? We should not accept everything. We should evaluate before, evaluate and analyze before we make our own opinion. Because sometimes our opinion is not the right one either. So the benefit of having a study like we have here is that we are able to share experiences, share opinions and ask, I don't know everything. Perhaps you know better than me and then I will ask you. Perhaps what you're going to tell me will help me to figure out what's going on with me or around me. The explanation of the phenomena accepted by spiritism along with their causes and moral consequences comprise an entire science and philosophy in and of themselves. And they require serious, persevering, and in-depth study. There are two things that Kardec recommended through every single book he did. Work and study. And both need to work together. To someone to say, I'm a spiritist, it's fine. How often do you study? Say that I'm a spiritist is very nice, but a true spiritist, they will study, they will work, they will do charity and a few other things, right? You are all so quiet today. So just a reminder, please open your mic, make me questions, comments, feel free to do so, okay? Guilherme? Yes? Uh, quickly, uh, the number seven, there's something very important that always Kardec mentioned and people understand wrongly and try to put in different way. He says here, moral consequences comprise an entire science and philosophy. Então, what is spiritism? Science, philosophy, and moral consequences. The words are from Kardec, not from Elsa, from you or from other people. So it cannot go against what is written here. And we have to accept because this is true. No, only that. Thank you. It is important to, yeah. Thank you, Elsa. That, that's, I, I missed that. And uh, it is important to understand what every word is saying, right? What Kardec identifies as science, what Kardec identifies as philosophy. And what are the moral consequences, right? Sometimes we, we create our own perception for those words. But uh, through this study, I hope that on the end, we'll have a better understanding of what they mean to Kardec and how we can use them better. I saw a hand. Hi, Faye, how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. Yourself? Not bad, not bad at all. <laughs> Good. 
Um, I'll be, you'll be seeing me in and out, so but this is not important. It's, it's just that I, I uh, one, one little um, word is still regarding what you're saying and, and what uh, Elsa pointed out. It's just occurred to me that um, this is so true, this is so important because Kadek has encouraged and has allowed and encouraged that principle to be a consensus. Yeah, it's not only him or only his mentor or only one or two mentors. He's allowed that to be questioned a number of times and still questioned today a number of times and we still have consistent replies confirming the same principle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. So it, it is. is a consensus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to those that uh, didn't join us from the beginning, just a quick reminder, Kardec, he gathered information from several countries, several spirit centers, mm -hmm. several different mediums. It's not like he was listening to one point. No, he was listening to several points. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. Spiritism can only regard as a serious critics those who have seen and studied the whole matter. I love that very much because quite often we see comments, friendly suggestions sometimes, people who agree or do not agree with us most of the time, and when I say that within the spiritist environment, right? But then when we start to ask questions to understand where the common suggestion or question are coming from, we identify that the person had very little exposure to the doctrine. The person sometimes do not work at all, just attend lectures from time to time. The person had the opportunity to buy and read one, two books, and they formulated their own truth. And they start to ask you based on what they understood about that little exposure or what they believe. That's not a problem if before we argue someone, before we try to express what we believe, we have had the opportunity or allow us to have the opportunity to really understand the subject. And you see here in the sentence what Kadak will say, right? Who have delved into it with the patience and perseverance of a conscientious observer so first question I would ask, what is an observer? Can we observe a book only? I don't think so. You need to observe the phenomena. You need to observe facts. Observe a book, I don't, I have a hard time to understand just observing a book. Who have as much understanding of the subject as the most enlightened utterant. So if we want to make a comment about something because we feel like we have to, it's fine and it's very positive. But to argue or to, how can I say that? Or, or, or to create a situation where I want to say that what is written there is not right. I need to understand that in depth. I need to have the same level of understanding of those who are defending one point. And that's not only in spiritism, that's everywhere, everywhere in life. To talk about something, we must know what we are talking about. Otherwise, it's just a perception. Who have not therefore 
acquire their understanding via literacy, science fiction. When I was reading that earlier today, what came to my mind is that it's very easy nowadays to see a lot, a lot of things on cartoons, on movies, TV shows, even people bringing news that is more like science fiction than anything else. But what he was trying to say here is that we need to understand what is real, what is not. Science fiction is all wrong. Maybe not, maybe not. But we have to evaluate case by case. Who will not attempt to oppose any fact with which they are unfamiliar or any argument upon which they have not meditated or have refuted only by denying it. I don't believe, so it does not exist. I don't like, so that, that's not good for me. If it's not good for me, it's not good for anyone. Before we decide to open an argument with anyone about any fact, any, any subject, if you decide to oppose, as say he oppose facts, to oppose a fact, I have, I need to have a fact in the opposite direction. And not only once, I need to have a repetition of events that will allow me to discuss the subject with someone. Why is that? Let, let me say that I have experienced 300 times one type of event. And you are coming to me with no event, no fact at all. And you're telling me that uh, that's not possible. If you are serious about it, if you have a good intent with this argument, that's fine, we, we will talk. We will try to make reasoning of myself and with you about this subject. That's not a problem. But you had no facts to support what you're trying to. So before we go on that avenue, we need to prepare ourselves, study, prepare a case, if you like, with events, with facts, and then this will be more positive. Not just say, uh, no, it does not exist. Let, let's talk about spirit here, how oh, spirit does not exist. Hi, Munir. Hi, good evening. Hello, everyone. Uh, I think I see this in uh, two different situations. One um, is that, you know, although we may not know very well in depth the spiritist doctrine, we may always express our views and our opinions, but we have to be very clear when stating uh, the grounds we are based on to say, well, I believe, but, you know, I know very little about spiritism, or I've read that book and the other book, or I have so much experience with the phenomenon and so on. But to, to question the, the veracity of a, uh, um, um, you know, teachings like the spiritist teachings or the explanations that are offered, you have to be very well prepared. You have to know that in depth. Otherwise, it's just an opinion. And as an opinion, we respect but you can't just, you know, uh, start to question uh, the, the um, spiritism in depth if you've only read very little. You know very little, uh, uh, as they've said, you know, from uh, science fiction literature. So, yes, okay, it is your opinion, but you have to read more or you have to understand it um, based on uh, at least the five books that Kardec compiles. Otherwise, it's just an opinion. So I see these two situations. I may tell you my, my opinion, my experience, what I know, what I understand, but I can never question 
the uh, you know the the, the spiritist doctrine because you know I've um, you know I know very little and, and I think my opinion is is more important has more significance than than the um, the arguments that are presented by Kardec. When you were talking, uh, Monia, I, I was thinking the way I, I do personally, when I have like a, a debate of things, if I see the, a debate about any subject in regards to the spiritist doctrine is from someone with an open heart, is someone that's really trying to, to learn something or to understand what's going on then, I have no problem. I really try my best to help. But when I sense there are some hidden objectives in those arguments, I don't even bother because I won't waste my energy with things like that. I can't, I have things more important to do. And am I right or not? I don't know, but that's the way I do when things like that come to myself, because very often people that we know or through lectures, people try to convince not only you, but people around that uh, there are other ways to see things, but uh, I, I simply do not waste time with that. I may be wrong, but uh, is using what Kardec just said, is, did this person really bother to study the matter? Did you have enough exposure, practice, to, to make that point? Maybe, but most of the time, it's just an opinion, just a perception. But who use all the arguments that are more peremptory? Finally, those who can point to a more logical cause behind the established facts. So we have to be open to new facts as well. Because Kardec told us that in more than one situation that the spiritist doctrine was not cast in stone. That means that was not, that was it. And no one will hear anything different. No, he said exactly the opposite. Spiritist doctrine will evolve with science, with exposure. So we need to be open to different facts, to different situations, not opinions. That's why I'm, I'm saying quite often facts, because when you start to elaborate theory, theories based on facts, you deserve my respect and I will pay attention because I have to, because I know that things will come to complement what we already have. And when they come, I need to be open to analyze, to study, because that's what Kandak was saying that if anyone wants to talk about something, needs to study, needs to have experience, is exactly the same for us. If a different fact come to our attention, it happened more than once, means it's a fact with a repetition in time. We should also study analyzing depth what anyone is bringing to our attention. That's our duty as well. But Kadak is saying here in the end, in the very last, such critics have yet to appear. Because quite often, critics are just critics. I don't like, I don't believe, it does not exist. And the day I want to have fun sometimes, people ask, oh, I don't believe in spirits. Okay. It's up to you to prove they don't exist, not to me to prove that they exist. Oh, I don't believe in life after death. Okay, prove to me that there, there's nothing after death. I don't have to prove anything. And I said at the beginning of this study, I believe, because I said quite often, I'm not here to convince anyone. I'm not here like I'm the truth. No, not at all. And any of you here that do not agree with something that we are talking here, I'm encouraging you, bring forward, let's talk. Let's talk, because that will help me perhaps to fix something I misunderstood. But uh, 
Kardec said that he had a hard time to find someone, some critics that fulfilled the minimal requirement to have an argument like. Item 15, we previously made reference to the word miracle and a brief observation concerning the subject would not be out of place in a chapter dealing with the extraordinary. In its primitive acceptation and according to the, its etymology, the word miracle means something extraordinary, something wonderful to be told. But this word, like many others, have, has strayed far from its original meaning and nowadays refer to, according to the academia, an act of divine power that is contrary to the common laws of nature. Let me highlight that. Such is actually its usual acceptation and only by comparison or metaphor does it apply to common things that surprise us and whose cause is unknown to us. Have, we have absolutely no intention of examining whether or not under certain circumstances, God might deem it useful to derogate from the laws that have been divinely established. Let me stop here a little bit, otherwise I'll get lost. Uh, there are two things that have got my attention here in this part. We use quite often the word miracle and we all want to be part of it because when we are in trouble, we want a miracle in our favor. But understanding that everything that guides us on earth, on the spiritual realm, follows a universal law, miracles in theory do not exist. Perhaps we do not know every single law yet that guides us in this world. But there is a law guiding everything. Otherwise, how can we have thousands, billions of planets circulating in this universe and none of them are hitting each other? How do we have so many other examples showing how perfect is the nature, the nature of God? So laws, in my opinion, they do not change. We, they don't understand all of them, right? And then we say here, God might deem useful to derogate some law. Might. So he possibly have the right to do it. But when you deviate from the laws that bring balance to the universe, you may start to have other consequences. Who am I to evaluate what God can or cannot do? I, I can't. I don't even understand God. None of us understand God, really. We have a hard time to understand Jesus. Thinking about God is even more complicated. But I think God would not change a law. I think that he, he can and he, he would use a law that we don't know yet. And because we don't know, we think that's a miracle. Our objective is solely to show as an extraordinary as a spirit phenomena may be, they do not in any way derogate from those laws. So regardless, of what we think about miracle, any spiritist, spirit phenomena does not deviate from the law. Nor is there any miracles, much less extraordinary or supernatural character about them. So anything in the spiritist philosophy 
you may find that is not a miracle. That's not extraordinary. That's not supernatural. That is natural. And that is a consequence of the one or multiple universal laws. A miracle has no rational explanation. Spirit phenomena, on the other hand, may be explained in a most rational manner. And some of you may be thinking, oh, well, how can you explain this? How can you explain that? Give a bit of time, study with us, or even other books like, and you find the answers. Because things that we believe that's not possible to be rational is because we don't know yet. But that's the main beauty of spiritism. It came to enlighten us, to remove that curtain of unknown things. And as I said, I think today, I could find answers on the spiritism. I, I don't remember an answer. I could not find yet. Even about spirit phenomena, the answers are there. And the other day we were talking about ghosts and things like that. Yeah, because people don't know. When you start to know, you see there's no such a thing as a ghost, like not in the sense that we understand a ghost, like Casper, like that format, a little ghost helping us or whatever. It's not like that. But we only realize it's not like that when we study the subject, seriously, with time. And we try, when we don't understand something, we try again. If that book does not answer me, I'm going to find another book. If I have a hard time, I'll ask one of my colleagues where I can find this. But information is there. Thus, they are not miracles but rather simple effects that have the reason for being included among general laws. A miracle has yet another characteristic. It is an uncommon and isolated event. Thus, every event that can be reproduced at will, so to speak, and by several individuals cannot be a miracle. I'm trying to think here about one spiritist phenomena that I saw only once, that has happened only once. I don't know. Do, do you know any, uh, who is that? Oh, Charles and Munir, do you know any example like that that you only heard that happens only once? I don't. Not really. There are some in the Bible. I mean, the Red Sea, when Moses was crossing it all. But, uh, you know, the doubt is, was it exactly that way? So we, we don't know for sure. And uh, we don't see that every day. It really happened that way, you know. But, you know, as far as I remember, apart from these, you know, passages from the Bible, and, uh, Munir, I'm not even one. sure. Yeah. I'm not even sure if that was uh, yeah. mediumistic yeah, or I, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. But uh, other than than that, not I'm not aware of anything that was has happened only once, only with one person, only with one. You no, know, everything has been happening all around the world, different mediums, different people, different time, different countries. Science performs miracle every day in the eyes of the uncultivated. And that is still very, still very actual because we have so many things science is doing today that uh, 
many people think is impossible. Impossible. The latest I saw, I saw this morning, they managed to knock down 30 years in age of a cell. So they come, they develop drugs, of course, this is still prototype things type, but they managed to avoid a cell to get old for 30 years. Seems scientific fiction, right? But uh, at least to some extent, they just realize that. So yeah, to me, this is magic. To me, this is a miracle because I have no idea how that's possible, right? That is why it used to be that those who knew more than the common folk were regarded as witches. And since it was believed that all superhuman science was diabolical, they were burnt at the stake. You may not believe what I'm going to say, but five years ago, I'm three years in UK, so yeah, around five years ago, reading an article in the newspapers in a different continent of ours, there was there. The article was there. They were hunting witches. And you could guess what they did when they found, right? So I'm talking about five, six years ago, Max. I'm not talking about centuries ago. And even today, when we talk about things of the spirit, people think it's diabolical. Why is that? It's because we don't have a common knowledge yet. Nowadays, we are more civilized and it is sufficient to put them in our asylum. So you all need to be very careful. <laughs> Otherwise, we may end up in a very conf institution. I'll be the first one myself. Uh, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was thinking that the, everything came from the church. The, the church condemned the witches for since before the medieval, medieval era. So, and the church still has a power in these small villages in the different countries, but you know, far from civil, good civilization, good capitals, uh, big cities, etc. They still have the power into their hands. What the church is saying, the entire village will follow. If they have to catch someone as a widget, they will do a damage. Yes. Here in, in the UK, we have a city in south of uh, England that is entirely city was populated with witches. So you, 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 walk, you go there, you see everywhere the times when the, the witches was caught and burned, and, but they still using their powers at that time. So I think centuries ago. Okay, just a comment about the church. Yeah. And what are the witches? They are the mediums at the time. Hi, Faith, go on. Uh, I live in a place that's been named uh, as being the place where witches meet. Yeah, or met. They still do. I welcome that's That's what it is. And... Um, much as I understand that there is this influence of the church, um, it makes me think that anything, and until today, anything that has a strong negative appeal seems to find more resonance, seems to find more echo in, in people, in populations, that's something positive. Because there is this overall, you know, earthly culture of uh, if it's bad it's probably right I mean if it's bad it probably happens if it's good it's probably a miracle 
where this mindset came from, in, in which it, people tend to uh, believe more readily what's negative, or look at the newspapers, look at the news to sell most. Yeah? So where does that come from? Is this, this idea that whatever is negative is more likely to be true? And why is it that the positive and the good is less likely to be true? So the groups that like to exert some, some control, uh, call it political, religious, whatever it is, will resort to that. But can we change that mindset? I think our, our, our job is to help the understanding and, and change the mindset. So why is it that Whatever we say, the best that there is in spiritism and spiritualism as, as a general idea um, is, is next to miraculous as like almost like a fairy tale. Why is the good compared to fairy tale so not so believed? And the bad, which would be a, ba a bad fairy tale, is given more credit. So when, when someone says, oh, that's likely to be, if that's, that's him, all right, that's a, he's likely to, uh, to do this and that and destroy the whole village. Would he, he hasn't thought about it, but the mindset has already set him up, hasn't it? That's, I, that's, I think that's that how I feel. Is, I, I think that is related to our nature. We are so little in our own development. Mm -hmm. Yet we believe we are very clever. We believe we are the top of everything that mm -hmm. has happened so far, but uh, we're still very little. Our morale, still very little in comparison to what should be. And yeah. it's easier to us to believe in things that are negative because deep inside we are more negative than positive yet and that's and that's where exactly where i challenge every thought of that you know you've got to be uh, <clears throat> uh very careful of this this i said why not why is good not possible why there might why is this that must be something mischievous mischievous behind a good action a good deed you know, why good can't quite can't good be honest and uh, and negation of the things is just to be honesty and and this so that comes with this idea of being um you know i'm being honest mean i'm being nasty you know i'll be honest with you means i'll be nasty with you mm -hmm. really because in the name of honesty People find the excuse to, to lash out, to, to let whatever bad there is in them because they're being honest. No, they're being nasty. And you, you who says, it's not. You remind me something, Faith, that uh, on the end of the day, our perceptions is still playing a massive role in our lives. Uh, we've been asked to give support to a young teenager. She was suffering from a heavy obsession case. And we went to her mom's place to try to help her. We went there, we spoke with the entity, the spirit. We, we said, well, here we go. This is what we can do. We could not see what the family was seeing, like a devil type of thing, you know. We saw a natural phenomenon. It was an obsession case. We told how to help, what they should do, and what we would do to make that thing come into a turn. The perception of one of the parents is that we we were totally wrong, right? We were saying crazy things to them. And they 
took the child. She was 16 or 17 years old, as far as I remember, to one church. And the priest performed what they call exorcism. Right? And fair enough, in less than a week, they call us to go back to a place to try to help because they went to this church and the result was not very positive. When we arrived at that family house, then we noticed the child has been beaten. She was beaten. And that was not pleasant to see, I can guarantee you. She was beaten. So once again, let's do what we have to do. But it's down to perception. I'm not saying who is right, who is wrong. I'm not here for that. I'm not here to judge. Everyone tried to help with the knowledge and the possibilities they have. That was the possibility the priest had to help. And that's what he has been told. That was what he's learned. And, but the result was not nice to see. So it is down to perception, right? So let's move on a little bit, be more positive now. <laughs> if someone were really dead and were resuscitated by the divine intervention, then as we stated earlier, we would have a true miracle because it would be contrary to the law of nature. And that's one of the arguments we have between different Religions like, you know, resuscitation or bring someone from the dead. When the matter, our physical body is gone, it's gone, it's rotten, right? However, if the person only appeared to be dead and is still preservated a fragment of latent vitality, and science or some magnetic action managed to reanimate him or her, then to enlighten individuals such as such would merely be a natural phenomenon. What he's saying here that we have cases of people that were given as dead, but they were not dead. Catalepsia is one of the situations. Right? Nevertheless, in the eyes of uncultivated folk, the incident would be regarded as miraculous and its author would either be chased with, with stones or venerated, depending on the character of the individual. So once again, is a, is a brilliant example showing us that we need to investigate more, we need to understand more, but nothing is unnatural, there's no miracle. From time to time, we see on news that doctors have given a person as dead, and before being cremated, before being buried, they just, well, I'm not dead yet. Is it a miracle? Possibly not. But the person who had evaluated missed some signs, missed some possibilities, right? If in a rural area, a physicist were to fly a kite rigged to attract electricity, which then caused a boat to strike a tree, this new Prometheus would, be, would certainly be viewed as possessing some diabolical power. Sometimes we go to the spirit center. We are hoping that our pain, pain will be alleviated, that our spiritual problem would be helped, that we don't really know if that's possible, right? But we, we decide to go to a healing section, for example. When it is over, the, the, the pain's gone, the, the problem's gone, and is that a miracle? Not at all. But for some people with little understanding, they may say that even di diabolical, as he's saying here. Hi, Elsa, I saw your hands raised. Only a quick reminder, Jesus 
was preaching and the uh, inverted commas doing miracles for three years, helping everyone around him, doesn't matter the social position, etc. Oh, the day that the, um, the crucifixion came, no one raised their hand to defend Jesus, even the, the apostles. The same people that receive all the miracles, all the end of illnesses, etc., they were there saying, crucifix, crucifix, crucifix him. Okay, so it's, <laughs> it's a painting because it, as viewed as a, as a, a higher profile person or a, a diabolic person. It is dependent on the mind, but the people go to the multitude, goes to the, you know, the flow with the, with the other people. Mm -hmm. so, only a few stop to think reasonable about the situation, about the miracle, inverted commas, about the someone that received uh, end of illness, etc. But the majority, they go to the flow. They go against, they do what the majority are doing. It's only that comment about Jesus. Good example, very good example. And we're still doing the same. <laughs> Couple of hundred years going by and we're still doing the same. Moreover, one could say that remarkably, Prometheus seems to us to have been a prosecutor, pre precursor to Benjamin Franklin, while Joshua in making the sun, or rather the earth stand still, would provide us with a true miracle because we have never heard of any magnetizer gift with enough power to perform such a wonder. Of all spirit phenomena, one of the most extraordinary and indisputable, and one of the most obviously demonstrate the action of hidden intelligence involves direct writing. Let me just mention what is direct writing so that will be easy to understand. When the spirits write through a medium, we call that psychography, but there is also a way that they can write without the contact, the physical action of the medium. That is called dialectic writing. And at the time of Kardec, when they want to eliminate any problem situation, they put a paper, a blanket paper inside a place, they lock with the keys and no one would have access to that place. They had a spiritist session. In the end of the session, the person who had the key opened the drawer, removed the paper, and then the message was written. That is direct writing. Hi, Elsa. No, it's not me, it's Yasmin who wants to say something. Oh, sorry, I didn't see the other thing. Sorry, go on. Um, no problem. It's just that because Elsa asked if anyone would like to comment uh, before the end, and I guess it's almost the end. So maybe I can wait after you've finished. Is... No. Go on, your time now. Oh, okay, sorry. So good morning, everyone. Um, and I would, I would just like to to comment or maybe um please please stop me if i'm if it's if it's out of um uh because um earlier earlier someone mentioned um that to 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 be honest to be honest and is is a way is is a, is kind of being nasty and i agree but and the other day i was uh we were studying leon denis book and um, I made, uh, I would like to make also the, the same kind of comment um, where, sorry, I'm always getting nervous <laughs> when there are people looking at me. <laughs> so I just, okay, I rest. Okay. Okay. And is, I live in Japan and in Japan things are like, um, most, the society tries to think positively and it's not, Japan is not perfect. Honestly, it's not perfect, but people tries to, to think positively and, oh, these people did a mistake and 
they won't say, oh, you made it wrong and so on. They will try, mm, maybe he had some problems and so on. And what I would like to say with that is that, okay, um, I to, and I totally understand it's hard to hear nasty things um, under cover of honesty, but at least those people might not have uh, punched the other person. They might have not done worse things, and and yeah, and they will they will still improve, and they, they will will so on. And there are also a lot of cause cause, cause and effects that is my, might be another explanation and a lot of other laws. Um, that is to say, we have, we have to, we should try to stay optimists regarding those things. And to, because if we, if we get caught, if we get caught in this, oh, he is mean and so on. Oh, why he's mean? And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel little by little like oh and this world is so horrible and oh no and so oh why and and our pensament sorry a pensament um pensamentals uh our our thoughts will just will just be at the same level and a lot of spirits book talked about the importance of thoughts and pen pensamentos sorry uh, pensamentos is false in English? Yeah. Okay. And it's very important. And just to 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 can I, can I go a bit further or should I stop there? No. Okay. No. Because 